Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about benchmarking the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. During my trip to Hawaii there was a lot of announcements and I got my hands on to almost all of their hardware that they had available. Now one of the sessions that I really enjoyed was the ability of benchmarking the device, the reference device that we had access to. I also got a chance to play some games on there so this video is really encompassing the benchmark numbers so reference points for benchmarks as well as gaming but I also want to talk to you guys about the temperature concerns that we had with the Snapdragon 888 in 2021 and how this is going to translate into the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 after talking to some of the engineers over at Qualcomm. This is TK, let's go ahead and benchmark the brand new Snapdragon 8. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So I'm going to start off by talking about the setup. This was a closed session and the devices that we were using are reference devices, meaning they are not basically an OEM version of a device. This is not like a Realme, a Samsung, or insert whatever OEM you want to look into. This is essentially a reference device, a stock experience with Android 12 built in. And to the understanding of the processor, this is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is the processor that we were using here. And its architecture is basically based on the uh, Cortex X. X2. So the architecture that we have here is based on the Cortex X2. So the prime core is going to be running at a top speed of 3 gigahertz. The performance cores are going to be running at about 2.5 gigahertz and those are going to be the performance core, the three mid performance cores. And of course the efficiency cores are going to be running at 1.8 gigahertz. So the architecture is very similar to what we've seen before. But the main difference here essentially is that this is an upgrade or performance upgrade from what we've seen last year with the 888 and hopefully the benchmarks will be able to showcase that. Keeping in mind that most of the benchmarks are probably still new to this process Processor, so I'm not sure if it's all the way optimized, but the numbers that we're going to show, some of them I'm able to compare with the Snapdragon 888 since I'm actually using the brand new Snapdragon Insider phone and I used that one and this is running the 888, not the 888 Plus. Since we got all of that set up out, I installed a few benchmarks and we're going to start talking about some of those numbers. Obviously, the first and foremost one that a lot of people, at least I like to reference, is Geekbench. Now, I wasn't able to run Compute, so Vulkan and OpenCL did not run. They kept crashing on the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and I'm thinking it has something to do with Android 12 and of course the optimization for the new system. So the main thing is the CPU did run and we did notice a little bit of an improvement between the two systems. Namely that on the single core on the 888 we were clocking in at 1116 as it compared to the 1228 on the brand new 8 Gen 1 and of course on the multi-core 3538 on the 888, 3821 on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. The performance that we see here obviously is a generational bump so keep in mind obviously if you're coming from an earlier generation device this is going to be a much bigger delta between what you have and what the 888 or the 8 gen 1 will be performing the next test i ran was pc mark and i also did get a chance to compare between the two now this one the variance between the two was a little bit smaller than what we saw with uh, geekbench on pc mark we got 17218 on the 888 and 17262 on the 8 gen 1. Again, the difference is a smaller difference between the two, but still a slightly more, I would say, a generational upgrade. Uh, I probably would recommend rerunning these, of course, on a more of a, a production style hardware, as again, this was a reference device. Now, the next test is something that I normally don't run, but because the 888, uh, or at least the 8 Gen 1, has some optimizations done on the AI performance, I did went ahead and installed and run AI Benchmark. And for that one, actually, we got a slightly different uh, experience. Uh, the number was actually a much greater difference between the two. On the 888, we clocked in at 173.1, as opposed to on the 8 Gen 1, we clock in at 541.9. So that's a much bigger delta. I'm not sure if it has something to do with the fact that the 88 Plus had more of an AI performance enhancement. And of course, the 8 Gen 1 builds on top of that, as opposed to where the 888 did not have a lot of those optimizations. Again, you benchmarks are definitely not the standard. This is, again, a point in time and a specific test that was done on a reference device. Now, of course, a lot of people love to talk about N22, depending if you like it or if you don't. Most of the results that we got here were all almost at a million. I'm talking basically about the QTI running in as 997,000, uh, CPU running in at 228,000, and then GPU is running at 423,000. So again, some generational improvements here. I did not get a chance to run N22 on the 888 with the Snapdragon Insiders. It kept crashing and freezing on me. So for the most part, the number that we're looking here is straight from the 8 Gen 1. And the last thing I actually wanted to talk about is a performance test that takes literally about 30 minutes to run and it was only run on one device that Qualcomm was running at the same time as we were in that session and essentially it's ML Perf. For image class we got 2518. As far as object detection we had 1240. Image segment 601. Language understanding 38. Image class 3809. And of course lastly image class at 3809. 
Again, all of these numbers are points of reference and you could basically take them with a grain of salt and obviously understand this is a reference device. It's going to change depending on the optimizations. And I do want to mention that performance mode was turned on on all of the tests that we're talking about here. I did not turn it off. The reference devices do have a performance toggle that was enabled in the battery settings. And for that, I did turn that on and I kept it on for all of my testing. Now, when we switch it over to gaming, of course, I installed some of my favorite games. We're talking about Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile. Of course, no question, we're going to start off with Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact ran in high performance at 60 frames per second. I played for over 10 minutes and it actually had absolutely no problems. And as it is expected, the 888 and the 888 Plus uh, have performed quite well with this game and I haven't had any issues with it. It's optimized to run on Snapdragon and of course it runs at the best settings. Now, as far as temperatures while playing this game, I did not notice any overheating temperatures. But again, this was not one of my well, one of my longer sessions. Essentially, I didn't get a chance to play a very long time because this was a, a timed uh, benchmarking session. So after I finished all of my benchmarks, I had a little bit of time left to be able to do gaming. So from the 10 minutes or so of gaming I got from each game, they definitely did perform to the level that I was expecting. Ran pretty nice. And it, of course, all the graphics were basically maxed out. So switching it over to PUBG and that experience kind of continues there. We have Ultra HD with Extreme, so the best frame rate and the best resolution on this device. The display on the units that we were using ran at 1080p 120 hertz, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So they are definitely running at a higher refresh rate and they did run with 12 gigs of RAM, so that's also one of the other points of reference. So PUBG Mobile, absolutely no question, ran absolutely great. Um, no issues at all with performance, no issues with overheating, no issues with customizations. And I definitely did enjoy my session playing the game. It took me a while to download all those resource libraries for all the games, but it definitely looked really nice. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about Call of Duty Mobile. And of course, the game, as you'd expect with the first two, ran absolutely fantastic. The best settings, all the best optimizations that we have in there. Um, although we didn't get a chance to play at 120 hertz, that's mostly a developer uh, optimization. As we've seen, Sony currently is the only one that allows us to do that with Call of Duty Mobile. But at 90 frames, per second there's no question it ran absolutely great gaming on this was really nice i was able to log in with a guest account not mine and that's why you probably have seen a little bit more of the earlier training sessions as opposed to maybe more of a, a normal uh, you know pvp kind of an experience so all in all what we're seeing here obviously is what we expected a small generational bump performance over the 888 the 8 gen 1 is performing definitely better it is going to get better as time gets better uh, and of course optimizations for applications gets better the last thing I did want to talk to you guys about is the temperatures. So I did bring this up to some of the engineers in there saying, you know, we've had concerns over the 888 and the temperatures that we've seen uh, with devices running the 888. And we had companies throttling applications or throttling performance so that the temperatures don't go high. And what was the response actually was very interesting. Qualcomm's approach to this is very different than what I've heard from before. Now, in 2020, we didn't get a chance to actually sit down with them. This was more of they gave us all the benchmarks and we looked at the data. This one, their approach is very straight. They said that they provided OEMs and manufacturers all of the guidelines and requirements to be able to manage or the thermal manage the 8 Gen 1, meaning that Qualcomm isn't trying to throttle or limit the, uh, the performance on this 8 Gen 1. Actually, they're building on what they had with the 888. The difference, though, is I feel like the 888 had a little bit of a caveat that we needed to understand. At the time of the 888 announcement, most OEMs were building um, devices to manage thermal performances of the 865 and not necessarily the 888. And when the 888 was inserted in devices, we noticed that most companies weren't really doing a lot of either, either they did better performance in uh, basically by throttling the CPU or they did to give us a little bit more of a better experience on gaming devices that have better uh, heat dissipation. So Qualcomm's approach with the HN1 is very clear. They're going to provide the thermal requirements and the um, basically the requirements to OEMs to what they need to do to manage the thermal concerns out of the HN1. Does it mean that the HN1 is going to be running hotter or at the same level as the 888? That's still to be determined. From the about hour or so of performance testing and benchmarking, the devices I was using did definitely get hot. But that's because we were running benchmarks and those are not normal situations. So keep in mind, about a two hour session of benchmarking and consistently running the device at high performance, you're expecting to have some heat. How is it going to be important basically performing on uh, regular devices that things I like sold, let's say from companies, Samsung, uh, you know, Oppo, uh, insert, you know, one plus device that we're looking into that's yet to be determined and we're going to have to check it out. And my hope is that they take the recommendation that Qualcomm has to them and they provide better uh, mechanics and of course, better systems to provide the heat dissipation concerns. Well, the heat dissipation mechanism so that the devices don't overheat. I hope that you found this video helpful. I know there's a lot of information that I threw at you, but the intention here is to share with you guys a reference point or at least a glimpse of what the 8 Gen 1 can perform in 2022 for us on flagship devices across all of the OEMs. 
This is TK. Thank you very much to Qualcomm for inviting me to the Tech Summit last week. And of course, uh, sharing with me access to this device to be able to actually give you guys the benchmarking and gaming experience off of the brand new 8 Gen 1 from Qualcomm. I'll see you in the next video.